Yes, once a preacher, always a preacher. We're all like that. I used to think the good news, the good news of the gospel is that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know what verse that is? John 3.16. You know more than most Christians already, you guys. Um, and I used to get up and think that's the great news. I wanted to save one more soul before the world ended to keep one more of you from going into hell. If somebody was standing out in the street and they were blind and a truck is rushing toward them, wouldn't you go out and grab them and take them out of harm's way? Well, that's how I saw my ministry. The world's ending, hell is real, and you people, don't you want to be taken, don't you want this great message, this great news? I mean, why would you not want something so wonderful? I used to work with Catherine Kuhlman, the faith healer, and I, I saw healings. I saw miracles. Who could possibly deny the power? But I now realize that the supposed good news of the gospel is really just solving a problem of its own making. It's like, how much respect should you have for a doctor who runs around cutting people with a knife so he could sell them a Band-Aid? You know what I mean? So that's kind of what Christianity is. You are rotten. You are doomed. You are horrible. Suppose you were walking by my house one day. You've been walking by for a long time. And I were to go up on the porch and say, hey, stop, I've got some good news. Good news for you people. Stop, stop, stop. You don't have to go down in my basement. <laughs> this is great news. You've been walking by all this time. You've been ignoring me. And I deserve to be recognized and honored. And you've been ignoring me. And it's made me so angry and so mad. And I just get so horribly mad. So I built this torture chamber down in the basement. <laughs> And there's some hooks down there, and there's some sharp things, and there's some vats of sneaky stuff, and there's a furnace, and there's some chains, and it's horrible, and there's flames. But you don't have to go down there. I sent my son down there. <laughs> and... And... It was gruesome. I tell you, it was really horrible. But that satisfied my anger. And now <laughs> his blood was shed. And now, I'm, now, now, you, now you're free. You don't have to go down. All you have to do, come on up here. Just come up and tell my son that you love him and hug him. And then you can move in with us. We'll live up in the attic. And you can, you can tell me how great I am. Uh, you, can, you, can, you, can just tell, you can just tell me how much you love me. And we'll do that. Won't that be great? So would you keep walking? <laughs> and I thought, I really thought this was wonderful news. I mean, who would not want to hear this good news of the gospel? But uh, it's a morally bankrupt system. Any system of thought that has to use a threat of violence to make its point to any degree. And what is hell? It's a threat of physical violence. In the Quran, it's even worse. Have you ever heard people say, what if you're wrong? You know, like Pascal's wager. Um, what have you got to lose because you might, what, you might, what if there is a hell? Well, with that kind of thinking, this Pascal's wager kind of thinking, what you should do is pick the religion with the worst hell in it. Because <laughs> you should pick Islam. Um, because what if you Christians die and it's, it's that's, what have you got to lose? In, in the Quran, which I read again in two different English translations for this debate I did, um, Hell is this, it depends on what verse you read. Sometimes it's a freezing place. Sometimes it's a hot place. But uh, we infidels, me, uh, and I told this to Hamza, you know, I said, I'm, just because I disagree with you, because I am not faithful to your God, the skin's going to burn off my arms, off my, and it's going to be horrible. But Allah's going to come and grow it back again so he can burn it off again and again and again and again forever. While you Muslims, you faithful believers, are going to be sitting up on these purple couches under the fig trees with these dewy-eyed maidens sitting next to you, and you'll be looking down at us and laughing. You'll be, that's what the Quran says. You'll be laughing at us for that. And, um, and I said, and you're trying to tell the world about morality. You think you have a moral system, right? Um, and uh, I, in fact, I debated a guy a couple years ago in Colorado, uh, a Muslim imam, and when I told that story about the skin in the 
and the Muslims will be looking down laughing. In front of that whole crowd, he went. <laughs> he did. He was happy about that. He thought it was a great thing that I was actually preaching his, his book, the, the Threat of Hell, the Fear of Hell. 